Revelation chapter number 17. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible said, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into, uh, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We do thank you for the good singing tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. We thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Father, we do thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the house of God, the people of God. God, we thank you for the finished works of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for you first loving us. We thank you for your good grace. Lord, we're thankful. We sang that song the other day, Victory in Jesus. We're glad you loved us and you sought us and you bought us. And God, we bless your holy name for the work of salvation through and by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, now, Father, I come to you tonight. I do pray for Miss Andrea. Lord, I pray you touch her. Lord, I pray the next time she goes and they do tests, they'll be, the doctors will be amazed. The mass won't be there. God, you're the great physician. We know you can do things like that. You've done it many times over. And so, God, we pray your perfect will be done. But, Lord, we pray you touch uh, that dear lady. We do pray tonight for Miss Crystal, have to have those treatments. And, God, uh, I know she didn't sign up for that, but, Lord, I know she's trusting you through it. And so, God, I pray you touch her. I pray the treatments would be effective. And I pray, Lord, she'll be back uh, full-fledged before too long. I pray for her children. I pray for her husband and her family. God, you'd comfort them and help them through this. Uh, Father, I do pray you'd continue to be with Miss Tammy's Uncle Johnny. You know what he stands in need of. I pray for Owen tonight. Lord, that his fever would break and you'd touch him with the flu. I pray for Brother Josh and I pray as well for uh, Jackson. They're both feeling uh, under the weather. I pray for them. You'd touch them. I pray for others, Lord, that are sick, others that are providentially hindered. Uh, God, I pray that, Lord, your will be done in their lives. Uh, now I pray, Father, you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray that, Lord, uh, as the word of God goes forth, it would enlighten our minds, uh, and, God, it would give us feet swift to run to do the will of God, uh, to warn uh, and let folks know that Jesus is coming soon. Uh, now, Father, help us tonight to uh, edify the body of Christ. Uh, God, certainly if there's any amongst us tonight unsaved, lost without the Lord, uh, I pray tonight uh, Holy Ghost conviction would fall upon them uh, and they trust in Jesus before it's too late. Uh, God bless the Bible Institute. Uh, have your hand upon it. I believe you do. Uh, God, I pray that many would be equipped uh, to be the soldiers uh, for the cross that you'd have them to be. Uh, now, Father, help us tonight. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, we find here in chapter number 17 of the book of Revelation that uh, the Lord uh, 
through the great apostle John is uh, uh, pinning down some future events and some things that are going on. Uh, the book of Revelation is a wonderful book. Uh, if you study it and you seek it out, uh, you find the story is told over and over again, uh, and it's uh, given more details as things go on. Uh, matter of fact, from about chapter number 4 to chapter uh, 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 around chapter number 18 or so, 19, uh, you'll find that uh, it is dealing with uh, the great tribulation period uh, and it's dealing with the time uh, of uh, 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 the Lord's wrath falling upon this the time of Jacob's trouble as Daniel chapter 12 tells us about uh, and you'll find uh, that during that seven year period uh, uh, the church has been raptured out uh, and the Holy Ghost goes with us uh, and this world is given to total anarchy uh, there'll be a one world government uh, there'll be a one world religion. Uh, there'll be uh, 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 those that uh, uh, refuse to take the mark of the beast and buy into the one world government and buy into the lies uh, of the Antichrist. Uh, they'll be hunted down. Uh, they'll be sought after. Uh, they'll be imprisoned or killed. Uh, those that trust in uh, uh, the Lord in whatever uh, way that he uh, deems that people will come to him during that tribulation period, uh, uh, those people will be hunted for their faith, they'll have to be willing to die for Christ uh, during the tribulation period. Now listen to me. Uh, 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 i got to get to the thought. I can't get bogged down on all this. I know Jordan's teaching Revelation in the Sunday school class. Uh, but listen, uh, a few years ago a series come out called Left Behind. And it taught that after the rapture that folks will have a second chance to be born again. The Bible is very clear in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 uh, that if you've heard the gospel and rejected it uh, and the Lord comes back and the son of perdition, the Antichrist, takes over, uh, the Lord will bring strong delusion on you uh, to where you'll believe, believe a lie and you'll be damned. There is no second opportunity. Uh, if you reject the gospel, friend, uh, hell will be your home forevermore. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, uh, can I say, God will have a way for people to come to Him during the Great Tribulation period. And in accordance to the Word of God, there will be 144,000 Jews saved during the Great Tribulation period. Also, according to Revelation, I believe, chapter 7, there will be a great number that no man can number that will come to God. But make no mistake, none of them heard the gospel during this dispensation. Say, who's that great number? Well, I imagine it's some of them uh, 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 millions of people in India and some of those millions of people in China and some of those millions of people uh, 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 throughout uh, 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 Mongolia and places uh, where the gospel's not been uh, preached or where the gospel's not been openly preached uh, and folks have never heard about Jesus Christ uh, and God in His justness uh, and in His holiness will make a way where even those people can come and trust in the Lord. Uh, but again, they'll not be saved by grace through faith like we are. You see, in every dispensation of time in the Bible, God always has a way where man can come to Him. Mm, but it's always on God's terms. And say, what will that gospel be in the... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be here. Really, don't really. I'm not worried about it. But there'll be a way. Well, I can see you're all interested in all that. But let me get to this text. In this text, I find something very interesting, and we'll get to it. And again, I don't have time to get into all, all the details of this. We'll be here all night. But I want you to notice, first of all, the vastness or the reach of the great whore. Now, can I say the Bible calls it the great whore? And so if the Bible calls it that, so can I. All right? But look again in verse number 1. The Bible says, And there came... A, one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, I can't get into all that, saying, Come hither, and I'll show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That word many waters is uh, referring to uh, this uh, great whore has extended her uh, outreach uh, throughout the world. Uh, it goes on to say in verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth 
have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh, when it's talking about fornication, it's talking about spiritual adultery. Uh, it's talking about another gospel. Uh, it's talking about a religion uh, uh, that is teaching something other than Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Uh, uh, it's talking about an outreach uh, that kings have embraced, uh, that governments have embraced, uh, uh, that people throughout the world have embraced. Uh, it's talking about a uh, uh, a church or a religion that has impacted the world not for Christ but for the devil she's the great whore we see the vastness the reach of the great whore notice the viceroy or the ruler during the tribulation period of the great whore look at verse number 3 the Bible says so he carried me away into the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, don't have time to get into the uh, seven heads and ten horns, but you find this same beast mentioned prior uh, in the book of Revelation. It's referring to the Antichrist. The Antichrist is who she is sitting upon. The Antichrist is the one who is pulling the strings for her. Can I say this? Uh, prior to the tri Great Tribulation period, uh, the same spirit of Antichrist, the same one who is uh, going to be the one that rules the Antichrist, uh, is ruling the great whores. Uh, say, what is his name? Uh, he's referred to as the dragon. He's referred to as the wicked one. He's referred to as the, the devil. He's referred to as Satan. Uh, Satan is the one uh, who empowers this great whore. Uh, I want you to notice the vileness or the rancor of the great whore. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones. And I don't have time to get in what all that means. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, uh, and the abominations of the earth. Uh, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Uh, when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. We see her vileness. We see she is filthy. We see that she gives a religious front, but behind the scenes she is wicked and she is vile. Uh, uh, there are many abominations going on behind the scenes. Uh, and we also find uh, uh, that her cup is full of the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus Christ. We see this great whore is vile. But then we see the vision or the revelation of the great whore. Look at verse number 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The angel that comes and speaks to John says, I'm going to reveal the mystery. I'm going to give you the revelation. I'm going to give you the vision of who this great whore is. You say, Preacher, who's the great whore? In Revelation chapter 17, it amazes me. Commentators up through the 1800s were even fearful to name who she was. Very few did because they feared the wrath. Mm, this great whore through a thousand year period called what we know now as the Dark Ages slew upwards to 10 million of our Baptist forefathers. This great whore's been drunken with the blood of the martyrs. Can I say this great whore? You're hard pressed to go to any metropolis, any village, any habitation to where her harm hasn't reached. You say, preacher, who is the great whore? The great whore we find Look at verse number 3. I want to show you. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy. Here, look right here. Having seven heads and ten horns. Now look at verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. There's one place 
where a religion has come from that sits on seven mountains or seven hills. And that place is called Rome. The great whore is dealing with the Catholic Church or the Roman Catholic Church. There's been nothing that has done more detriment to the cause of Christ than the Roman Catholic Church. Notice the judgment comes against this great whore in chapter 17. Notice the Lord calls her the great whore. Can I say this religious whore is defiled, evil, and sinister? Contrast that, and you've got to keep in mind, Satan always seeks to imitate the things of God. Can I say the mm, sorry, no good devil realizes there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So we find Satan has the Antichrist and false prophet. We find there's always, he's always imitating. The devil knows that Jesus died for the church. He loved the church and gave himself for it. And he knows he's coming back for his church. So the devil needed a church. He's got the great whore. Contrast that with the Lord's church, the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ throughout the scriptures uh, is always pictured chaste, pure, unblemished. He's coming back for a church without spot, without blemish. Can I say the devil and your flesh always wants to defile you, always wants you to go after a path uh, 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 that is vile and defiling and wicked, uh, but the Lord always seeks us to be holy, for He is holy. Uh, can I say the Word of God never gives us a, a license uh, or an excuse uh, uh, to follow our flesh, uh, follow our intuition, uh, follow our own rebelliousness, our own defiledness. Uh, God says, if you belong to me, uh, you need to be holy, for I'm holy. Uh, hey, uh, what's wrong with a lot of our churches? Uh, preachers are afraid to preach on holiness anymore, uh, afraid to preach against sin anymore, uh, afraid to preach you got to live right, do right, walk right, talk right, because uh, the Bible teaches that's what his children are to do uh, God's people ought to look different ought to sound different ought to act different uh, and ought to be different uh, if the spirit of God lives inside of you he beckons you to be different thanks be unto God I'm part of the bride of Christ we find the enemy of that is the great whore I'm interested tonight out of verse number 9 where it talks about the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. With God's help, I got to thinking about all that and I want to preach on this thought, the seven mountains upon which the great horse sits. There are seven fundamental things that causes the great horse to be who she is. And I find those seven things are often found in every false religion. Can I say, uh, the sorry no good devil hasn't changed his devices. He's just fine-tuned them a little bit over the years. But he's always used the same things. And this great whore has rested on seven primary principles that have caused many people to trust in a religion and die and go to hell. Tonight, can I say this, that this seven mountains or these seven hills are things we should run from. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, here in Florence we've got a church, so-called church, called Seven Hills. Are they stupid? I don't know who's in charge of the hierarchy of that thing because it's not a local church. It's part of a network somewhere. But somewhere, somebody, don't they read the Bible? Well, they don't have the right Bible. Right. And they certainly are reading some of them commentaries that are afraid to call the great whore the Catholic Church. Huh? The Church of Rome. 
They won't call it that. I, I, I read some commentaries that, I mean, men, I've, I've read that for years. I, I just flipped over and said, we'll see if they'll name them. Nope. Hmm. Seven Hills? That's like naming the church Corinthian Baptist Church. Are you crazy? That's the most carnal church in the Bible. Uh, maybe they're telling on themselves. Maybe that outfit over there off the highway is telling on themselves. Huh? Well, let's look at these seven principles that this church or this so-called church, this religion, is built upon. Can I say, first of all, there's the mountain of convenience. It's become more and more prevalent over the ages. They have taken away any kind of form of standard just to get people in. Can I say this religion requires no change? Yet the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Huh? All things are passed away. Hey, listen, after your profession, if there's not been a change, you didn't get saved. Hmm? Uh, I'm not saying you aren't capable of sinning, but I am saying that if you do sin, it'll mortify you. It'll bother you. It'll disturb you. It'll disturb you before you sin, and then it'll really disturb you after you sin, huh? Because of the Holy Ghost living in you. Hmm? But if you can sin and it don't bother you, I'd do some checking up. If you can gossip and it don't bother you, I'd do some checking up. If you can uh, uh, dabble in the world and that not bother you, uh, I'd do some checking up. Uh, if you can take a nip every now and then that don't bother you, I'd do some checking up. Uh, 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 if you can uh, 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 talk and, and let a few words slip uh, uh, that would uh, make a sailor blush, uh, I'd do some checking up. Because uh, I'm here to tell you, when God saves you, uh, hey, uh, that which He puts in you starts to work out. Uh, he'll clean up your mouth. Uh, he'll clean up your life. Uh, he'll clean up your habits. Uh, why? Because he's God. Hallelujah. Huh? It's a religion of convenience. It's a religion that tells you you can live however you want to. Live wickedly all week long. Just come talk to a man in a dress with his collar round backwards. Uh, he'll tell you say some Hail Marys. You don't even know what you're saying. Uh, and everything will be all right. No consequences for your actions. Mm. No change. It's convenient. Uh, all you got to do is let people know, oh, yeah, I'm Catholic. When I drove in a Zuzu, I used to say, whoop de doo for my Zuzu. Uh, but it's a stronghold because it's just convenient for them to be religious. They don't know what they believe. They don't know what they practice. They don't know what the mass service actually represents. They don't know anything. They just know they had to go through a confirmation class. Uh, they were baptized as an infant, uh, and that's good enough. It's convenient. It'd be nice to know when you're going to heaven, you never have to live for God. Never have to read the Bible, because they tell you not to read the Bible. They don't want you to read it. Uh, never have to go to church. All you got to do with that is pay your tithes. Because the priest come knocking at your door if you don't pay. Uh, we need a hitman in here. Brother Tommy, that's your job. Go knocking on everybody's door if they don't pay, all right? Huh? All right. It's a religion that requires no change. It's a religion that requires no consecration. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Listen, the Lord told us to come out from among them. Who the world? Be ye separate, not to be unequally yoked with the world. We are to look different. We are to sound different. I don't care if it's popular. I don't care what the trends are. Uh, uh, we ought to look uh, uh, like a child of God at all times because uh, somebody's watching. Uh, uh, it does matter uh, 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 how your outward appearance looks. huh? It does matter where you go. It does matter what you do. huh? Y'all know I've done told you I go to a place I don't order a root beer because they bring it out looks like a beer bottle. The Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. If it looks wrong, you ought to run from it. Huh? 
we're to live a consecrated life. Why? Because the Lord's name is on us. That's why. Uh, it's a religion with no change, no consecration, no conformity. What do you mean by that? I mean, if you've been saved any length of time, you ought to start looking more like a Christian. You ought to start doing more things like a Christian. Uh, you ought to conform to the Bible. Uh, you say, what are you talking about? Well, Philippians chapter 2 said this, verse 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, if Jesus had it in his mind, we ought to have it in our mind. What was in his mind? Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Do you know the philosophy of Satan? If it feels good, do it. My right to my claim to myself. You know what's wrong with this generation? Uh, we've got three generations now being raised in America without God. Uh, and everybody claims their rights. Uh, I, I'm being done wrong. Uh, it's all about me. It's all about me. Uh, hey, uh, if anybody ever walked on this earth that could have said it's all about me, it would have been Christ. Uh, but he made himself of no reputation uh, and took on himself the form of a servant. Uh, friends, we're we're not to be somebody who acts like we arrived. We're to be humble. We're to serve. We haven't arrived. We're just saved by the good grace of God. He said he was made in likeness of man and being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We are to conform by having the mind of Christ and being a servant, being obedient to the will of God. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, my brethren, uh, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, uh, whatsoever things are just, uh, whatsoever things are pure, uh, whatsoever things are lovely, uh, whatsoever things are good report, uh, if there be any virtue, uh, if there be any praise, uh, think on these things. Uh, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Uh, Paul tells us how to think and he says uh, those things you've heard and received and been taught of me and seen in my life, you do those things and then the peace of God will rule in your hearts. We want the peace of God but living like the world doesn't happen. We've got to conform. Paul said, uh, you've seen it in my life, you conform to the same thing that I've conformed to. He went on to say this in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, uh, holy, acceptable unto God, uh, which is your reasonable service. How many of you presented yourself as a holy vessel to God this week? Boy, I preach on that to get real quiet from the pulpit to the back pew. Uh, but that's what we're to do. That's our reasonable service. Uh, and then he said, And be not conformed to this world. Hmm? I haven't said this in a while. I'm going to say it. But Lucas, if it's got feathers, it's got webbed feet, it's got a bill, and it quacks, and sounds, looks, and acts like a duck, it's a duck. If it looks like the world, if it sounds like the world, if it acts like the world, if it has the world's philosophies, it's of the world. It's not of Christ. We're not to conform to the world. But be ye transformed. Huh? How are we transformed? Huh? By the renewing of our minds, uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, how is our minds transformed? By getting them filled with what thus saith the Lord. Uh, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, when he said we're to think on those things, where do we get the virtue? Where do we get the praise? Where do we get those things that are lovely? Where do we get those things that are from the word of God? Uh, the more the word of God saturates our minds, uh, the more we'll be transformed from the world and we'll start looking like Christ. Uh, you don't put Christ in, he's not coming out. Hmm. Uh, you don't have to be around somebody long and listen to them talk. You find out what's in them. Uh, we find that uh, one of the mountains is a mountain of convenience. Just live however you want to and you get to go to heaven. Boy, it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? No. Look what shape the world's in. 
when you have to beat and murder people to get to believe what you believe? My dear friends, it ain't real. But when you can present Christ and He changes lives, that's real. You know why so many of our Baptist forefathers were, were martyred? Because they said, no, we will not accept infant baptism. No, we will not accept a church sponsored by state or by the government. No, we will not surrender our soul liberty. We will worship Almighty God. They said, we'll burn you at stake. A lot of them jumped in the fire. said, burn me. I'm not recanting Jesus Christ. We find that the mountain of convenience it's built on, but not only that, it's a mountain that's cunning, that's deceitful, that has blinded so many people because it looks holy. Just think about it. If you didn't know anything about the Bible or anything about church or anything about anything and you started looking around, does what we do look holy? You got a man who spits and slobbers and moves around and jumps all over you and throws handkerchiefs at you. Does that look holy? No. But you watch that mess and all the pomp and circumstance, that looks real religious. Hmm? And can I say the devil's slick? Do you realize up until about 72, it's really starting in about 69, all the Catholic services, even in the United States, were done in Latin? You know why? They didn't want you to know what they were saying. You know why they tell them they can have a Bible, but they can't interpret it? You're allowed to read it, but don't, because you can't interpret it. In other words, you can't figure out what it's saying, because you're not equipped for that. So they all have a Bible. It says, Holy Bible. And by the way, up to about 20 years ago, the Catholic Bible, John 3.16, read the same way it does in our Bible. But they never read it, because they were told not to. So they can't understand what the priest is saying because most of them are taking a nap anyway. It's so boring. Well, that's why they got to get up and get down all the time. Get down on their knees, get up. Get down on their knees, get up. Get down. And that's why he runs around with that incense and chokes you half to death, keep you from going to sleep. Huh? But do you realize what they really are saying they are doing in their Catholic service? They're saying when you take of what they call communion, the Eucharist, the wafer, and the, the wine, they actually are casting a spell through their so-called prayer, which, by the way, they read all their prayers. They don't know how to talk to God because they don't know Him. And when they read that prayer, what they are saying is they are literally taking the wine and turning it into the literal blood of Jesus Christ, and the wafer, they are literally turning that into the body. And when you come forward and you partake of that, you are partaking of Jesus Christ himself, so Christ is in you. The Bible said he was offered once for sins for all. They re-crucify Christ every mass service. That is not biblical. And Jesus did not want us to physically eat his body. He wanted us to partake of Him as Lord and Savior, and then He indwells us through the Holy Ghost. Uh, when He gave us the Lord's Supper, He said, This do in remembrance of me. He gave us that to be reminded of what it cost for us to be saved. He did not give us that so we could magically turn Him back into the wafer and to the wine so we could partake of Him to be saved much wickedness but people believe it because they've been blinded the Bible's very quick or very clear on some of their deceitfulness in 1 Timothy 4 verse number 1 the Bible says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils here's what they do speaking lies and hypocrisy I've known people said the biggest drunk in town was the priest. Hmm? Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. How in the world can they molest the people they've molested? It's come out in the news. How in the world can they be that big of drunks? How in the world can they get that many nuns pregnant and all that stuff and try and cover it up and stand before people? How can they do that? Their, their minds have been seared with a hot iron. 
they still think they're justified in what they're doing. But he goes on to say this about them, forbidding to marry. Guess what? They wouldn't molest children and they wouldn't get nuns pregnant if they'd give them a wife. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Here in a few weeks, they'll have what they call Lent, where they'll go so many weeks till Easter where they don't eat meat and they don't do this. Now they change up a little bit. Now they only do it on Fridays. Why? Because uh, it's got to be convenient. They've lost too many people. Uh, but they command you can't eat certain things. Hey, the Bible said everything. Matter of fact, uh, Paul went on to say, yeah, uh, uh, which God had created be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Uh, aren't you glad we're allowed to eat? Aren't you glad we're allowed to worship God? Aren't you glad uh, we don't have all that? that stuff on us uh, they're looking at outward works trying to earn God's favor the only thing that earns God's favor is what Jesus did on Calvary I'm telling you Satan's been very slick 2 Corinthians 4 and 3 but if our gospel be hid it's hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them can I say I have known Catholic people and if I can get them in the Bible it may take a while but you can show them where Mary had other children they teach she was a perpetual virgin you, you can show Jesus had stepbrothers and stepsisters you can show them in the Bible those verses I read about priests uh, 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 forbidding to marry you can show them uh, in the Bible uh, uh, all kinds of truths that they have no idea about if they let that Bible get in them enough, it'll start convicting them. And they'll turn from what they was taught to truth. But I'm telling you, the devil's slick. It's one of those mountains it's been built on. It's been built on convenience. It's been built on a mountain that's cunning. It's been built on cultism. We find in Revelation chapter 20, it's called the mystery of the Babylonian kingdom. We find starting in Genesis chapter number 10 where the Tower of Babylon is trying to build a tower to heaven. We find from that even when God confounded the language and they spread, that paganistic religion has filtered the known world. Every cult can be traced back to Babylon. And can I say, throughout the Catholic Church, you can look around throughout all of it, and there's so much Babylonian mess in it, it's not even funny. It's such a cult. Again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 16 says, What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The house of God is not to be a place of idols, yet you go in one of those places, that's all they got, statutes everywhere. Idols. Can I say the great whore embraces paganism, embraces paganism of mother-child worship. In front of every Catholic church, you'll find a, a statue of a woman with a child. They'll tell you that's Mary and Jesus. Wrong. That is Semiramis Sem and Tamas. Semiramis was the wife of Nimrod. Nimrod was considered a god in Babylon. Uh, he was the great hunter. Uh, he's the one that provided for everything. They worshipped Nimrod. Nimrod died. Semiramis, his wife, uh, she ends up pregnant. Nimrod's dead. Uh, even pagans back then would stone you if you ended up uh, 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 in, in pregnant with out of wedlock. Uh, and she came up with this uh, uh, story which the devil gave her because the devil knew, Genesis 3.15, uh, that the seed of the woman shall bruise his head. Uh, he knew that Christ was coming through uh, uh, the birth canal uh, uh, of a virgin in order to redeem you and I. Uh, uh, so he uh, had Semiramis say that Nimrod visited her from the dead and in impregnated her uh, and they worshipped her uh, and worshipped her child Tamas uh, and they've been doing it uh, uh, for ye uh, years before the Catholic Church ever started in 321 AD listen to me now uh, uh, the Bible even mentions her the queen of heaven uh, Diana uh, Astrid uh, she's been known as many names today she's known as Mary they worship her Yet we find Mary gives one command in the Bible. 
At the marriage of Cana, she points to Jesus and said, This is my son, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it, John 2, 5. And Mary never says anything else. But they worship Mary. And they worship mother and child. Can I say the great whore embraces the paganism, the use of idols, statues, pictures, objects, obelisks. Listen. The Bible made it clear under the law that we were to not have any graven image of God. Amen. None. So every one of you has got one of them paintings of the Lord's Supper. That's pagan. Every one of you watch them shows. It's got Jesus as the long-haired, lovely guy that acts a little sissy, a little feminine and all that. That ain't Jesus. That's pagan. John said when he saw him in Revelation chapter 1, he fell to his feet as a dead man. He doesn't look nothing like all these pictures. Uh, you're not to have pictures of the Lord or statues of the Lord. That's pagan. And that's what they do. How many of you have seen that picture so-called of the Lord with his heart with chains around it? That's pagan. That isn't the Lord. You say, how am I supposed to get an image of the Lord through this? Mm. Uh, well, I'll get off of that. Some of y'all got upset. I didn't even get on your little angel little things. I don't have to worship angels either. Uh, can I say the great whore embraces the paganism of relics and superstitions? They're constantly coming up with relics that are holy that Jesus had. Can I say Hitler lost the war not because of our, thank God for our, our young men that went over there in D-Day and, and thank God for how uh, the Lord graciously gave us the World War II victory, but mark her down, Hitler had the better army. But he spread it too thin. Why was Hitler in Africa? He was over there looking for the Ark of the Covenant. So he felt if he could find that, his army would be invincible. He spread it too thin. We cut off his supply. That's why, how he lost when he got over towards Russia. Cut off his supply. Couldn't get fuel. Couldn't get food to his troops. And they gladly surrendered. And then on D-Day, what our boys did to him? Well, you say, what happened? God was with us because we wasn't searching for the, the Ark of the Covenant. We was searching for the Lord to help. What can I say? Mm, let me give you some of the relics they claim they've had over the years. Anybody ever hear of the Holy Grail? That's the, the cup that Jesus supposedly drank of at the Lord's Supper. Huh? Mm, yeah, good luck with that one. See, what happened to it? It got thrown out with the rest of them. Uh, wasn't nothing special about the cup he drank from. Uh, as a matter of fact, he didn't even drink from it that night. He told them he wasn't going to drink with them until he got to, to the kingdom. So we see the Holy Grail. They've claimed they've had the actual crown of thorns. They've claimed that they've had Jesus' as swaddling clothes. Yeah. Hmm. They've claimed that they've had the water pots from Cana. They claim they have the tools from Joseph. Of course, every one of these claims have been debunked over the years, but they've claimed they've had these things. They've actually claimed that they've had the bones of the donkey Jesus rode into Jerusalem on. I got one better than that. They claim there was a certain part of Europe where they, there was a, a, a village that claimed they had Mary's body. Yet the Catholics teach she didn't die. She just floated into heaven. So they had to debunk that one real quick. And so many other things. The spear of inseen, all these things that they supposedly have had. All relics and superstitions. Say, preacher, what do we have? The Bible. So that's all we need. Truth. We don't need some superstition and some mystic thing. And listen, there's all kinds of services. They got the black mass. They got all kinds of wicked services. I'll give you this. Do you know they actually had a female pope at one time? Her name was Joan. They didn't know she was a female. 
Joan's father was a cardinal in the Catholic Church, and Joan, taught, and Joan was taught how to read. Back then, women weren't taught to read. He taught her everything about the Catholic Church. When her father died, she went to Rome. She showed up. She knew as much or more than anybody there. She disguised herself as a man. Well, they needed a pope. They put her in as pope. She served as pope till she turned up pregnant. See what happened? They stoned her. But then they had a special mass service where they turned her into a man. There's your first transgender right there. It happened in the Catholic Church. I'm talking about cultism. The cults believe all kinds of weird things where you can overcome things with the power of your mind and crystals and all kinds of special objects and all kinds. All those things have been used over the, uh, by the devil and Satanism over the years. I'm not saying there's not power in them, but it's not Holy Ghost power. Hmm? Can I say the great whore embraces paganism of worshiping or praying to the dead? Say, Catholic Church prays to the dead? Yeah, you ever heard of saints? They pray to those saints. Pray to this saint for peace. Pray to this saint for protection. Pray to this saint. I'll just talk to Jesus. You can have all them. Matter of fact, you've got to be conferred to be a saint. Well, what, you know, Paul called the believer saints. I got conferred to be a saint today. I got saved. And please don't pray to me. Your prayer will not be answered. Especially if you ask for money, all right? Can I say that's known in all cults. They pray to their ancestors. They pray to the dead. Uh, and can I say the great whore embraces paganism and symbols. All kinds of paganistic symbols throughout the Catholic Church. Every Catholic Church will have a son. They worship Ra, the sun god. Now, they don't tell you that, but the, every one of them's got a son, S-U-N. Anybody ever seen the mark of the fish and be told it's a Christian symbol? A few years ago, they tried to say, yeah, that's what uh, uh, the disciples would do. They'd make a mark of the fish in the, in the dust so everybody would know that they was a Christian without, you know, getting any uh, publicity brought to them or you know, subject themselves to being punished and all that. Well, I want to tell you something. If they can't tell you're Christian by your character, whatever you put in the sand isn't any good. But that's not a Christian symbol. Every pope has it in his mitre or his crown, his fish hat. He's got the mark of the fish. That is actually presenting Janus, the fish god. It's pagan. Everything about him is pagan. It's one of the mountains they're built upon. I've got a couple more. I'll rush to them. Another mountain they're built upon is control manipulation they manipulate people they want to control people another mountain that they build upon is cowering intimidation and fear you know how many people their lives were made miserable because they told if they would left the catholic church they'd be excommunicated there was no way that they could go to heaven because in the catholic church's teaching salvation is not in the lord jesus christ salvation is in the church that's why they baptize you as an infant because you've got to be part of the church because only the church is saved. Hogwash. Uh, uh, Christians are saved. Believers are saved. Uh, and the church is made up of baptized body of believers. Uh, my dear friend, there's not salvation in the church. Salvation's in Christ. You can be a Baptist and die and go to hell. But they intimidate people. Strike people with fear. Can I say another mountain that's built upon is command. They dominate they rule. They wanted to take over the world by force, not by the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And then the last mountain they're built upon is uh, they're contemptuous. So what does that mean, preacher? They, they feel like a, they have a sense of entitlement, like they're superior. I'm Catholic. I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. That's their mindset. Yet believers are humble. We know we don't deserve to be saved. And we're saved by the grace of God.
listen, there's a lot of good people who are Catholic because they were raised that way and they've never been shown truth. They don't know any different. Everything I've said tonight deals with the institution, not with the individual. Jesus loves them. Jesus wants to save every one of them. Jesus died for them. But can I say, people have been so blinded and so deceived, they don't know. And the indictment is so many people don't know enough about their Bible, they're scared to death to witness to them. Years ago, when we was at Orchard Street, Brother Randy, you remember, we'd go knock on all them doors down there around St. Henry, and I mean, the people, they were, they were just, they were old and mean, kind of like the colonel. They just slammed the door in your face. Every week, we'd be out there knocking on doors, and boom. So, one night, I had this epiphany, Brother Clint. That's a big word for me. Uh, I thought, well, I'm going to try this. So I'd go knock on the door. As soon as we tell them where we're from, oh, man. So I'd just say, well, will you please just take, because we'd give them a track and some things about you. I said, will you just please take this and pray for us? Well, every good Catholic has to pray for you if you ask them to pray for you. So they started taking it. Now, they might have pitched it right, but I didn't have any more door. And Brother Randy came, huh? how did you get, how did they not? So I told him he started doing it, huh? They mean well. They just think they're better. They think they're the only dog on the porch. And they don't know the porch they're standing on is built on seven mountains. Now, let me say this, I'll be done. The same tactic Satan uses in the great whore, he uses in every cult. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Say, Brother Doug, why would you bring all this stuff out tonight? So you're aware of it. I was thinking as I was, I was meditating on this thing, I'm thinking, well, everybody knows the great horrors of the Catholic Church. I'm thinking, no, we probably got some folks who have been saved, not, you know, or not been saved longer. They might have never heard this. And so the Lord convicted me. He said, you've got to bring this out. Why? Here's why. Here's how we combat the wiles of the devil. Number one, have the facts from the Word of God. You've got to have the truth and know how to share the truth because the truth is what sets people free. We've got to have fruit in our walk with God. They need to see something in us they don't have down there at, the, at, the, at, the, at whatever they go to. Huh? They need to see something different. And many of you work with Catholic folks, and when they go through problems and trials, they come to you because they've seen something different in your life than what they get. We need to see fruit in our walk. We've got to have the facts of the Word of God. We've got to have fire in our worship of God. You know one thing? When, when you set something on fire, people come out and watch it burn. People are enamored with fire. That's why we need the fire of God, why we need revival. So people come out and just see what's going on. And the last thing, we've got to have our feet swift to be a witness for God. Time is fleeing fastly. And Revelation 19 is in the Bible for a reason. Not many Catholics are coming to Christ. And a big part of the reason is not many Christians are going to Catholics. The term Catholic means universal. They seek for a universal church. The Lord's all about His local church. And our responsibility is to be a witness to Catholics to sinners to folks that are caught up in other cults idle words won't do it we've got to have some power behind it and the Lord gave us the Holy Ghost so we can be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world can I say these seven mountains a lot of things are built on them seven mountains but I do remember the Lord saying that if we'll have a 
faith the size of a seed of a grain of mustard seed. We can say to this mountain, Be thou cast in the sea, and it will be removed. So how, how, how are we going to make it? In? We're, going to, we're going to put into practice what God said and have faith and let God destroy the mountains. And just maybe we'll see some come to Christ. All right, I'm done. Brother Clint, come get a song to invent to you. Maybe you know somebody's Catholic, you need to come pray for them. Maybe tonight, you know somebody just maybe caught up something else. You need to come pray for them. Come and ask the Lord to put a fruit in your walk and fire in your worship so they can see something in the Lord. So they can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So let's all stand. They're picking out a song. Folks are coming. God spoke to your heart about anything else. You need to come. While they're picking that out, let's pray. Father, sometimes the word of God's harsh. Calling people whore is harsh. But truth is truth, Lord. Sometimes we need to season it with grace and love, but it's still true. So God, I pray for folks that are caught up in cults, or denominations or even sitting in Baptist churches but lost thinking they're okay because they go to church or because they've been baptized or any other outward thing God I pray somehow we can have such a revival that God we can impact these folks Lord I know you love them I know you died for them God break our hearts to go after them Bless down this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn away. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.